guys, welcome to another episode of A Shot of Ruby. And in this episode, we're going to be filling out our mobile site, right? The mobile version of our, of our site. So this is where we left off in the previous episode. We just have the frame working and uh, there's literally there's nothing inside. It's basically just a framework seven frame. And, uh, you know, we haven't rendered any content. So in this episode, we're going to be focusing on rendering the content and, you know, filling it all out with like the form where we can create a new post and render the list of posts that we have on our site. And when we tap on that post, it's going to take us to the full page where we can read the entire content. So before I go ahead, I want to point you guys over to this kitchen sink here that Framework 7 has provided us with. So this is the greatest way to learn about Framework 7 and how it all works. Um, most of the time when you're working with Framework 7, you're not going to have to do much in terms of JavaScript and CSS. You might have to dabble in CSS a little bit, but most of it is going to be happening within HTML and CSS, or the HTML itself, and uh, you know which classes to use uh, in which case to get the effect that you want or get the, the look that you want. So they have a very uh, thorough and a comprehensive uh, kitchen sink here. And, uh, you know, just come in here and look through it and uh, you'll be able to find uh, what you want uh, in here. So what I'm going to be using to list out the post is this one here. It's just a list of posts. And if I do an inspect element on my inspector, I'm going to see these things here. Right. So I'm not going to type all the HTML syntax out for you guys. I'll show you like, you know, where we left off and I'll show you like, like a before and after, and then I'll explain through the different bits of code and what it uh, does. With that out of the way, um, you know, let's take a look at, you know, the structure of this thing here. So, uh, in our code, if you take a look, uh, we have the div class page, right? So this is the basic structure of the page that we have right now. It's just an empty page. Now, if you look over here, uh, this is the page class that we have, right? Um, they have this data page media list. I found that it works even without the data page. Um, but this can be handy if you're using caching, like it helps uh, Framework 7 identify which page uh, we're working with. So um, basically, if you know, Framework 7 has already rendered that page, it's not gonna get this page from the server again. Um, but we'll go into that later in the optimization uh, episode uh, in the next episode. This episode, we're just going to fill it out uh, in the most simple way possible. So we have this page class and then we have this page content here, right? So what we need to do here is, you know, we need to give it the div class page content. So everything that you're going to do is going to go in this page content div. Inside the page content, so we have over here the div content block, that's the top part. And we we're going to ignore all that. We're going to come down to this one here, this list block media list. That's the one we're going to use, right? So if you look at the structure, you can see that, you know, it has a certain structure to it. It has this list class swipe out and, you know, di uh, all this div class uh, swipe out content style and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, it's basically just a, a unordered list and then it's got the individual list item for each of the link, right? So we are going to try and replicate that. So I've already done it. So I'm going to show you the after code. All right. So this is uh, what we have, um, you know, once it's all filled out. I'm just following exactly what Framework 7 provided, right? I have the div page content and then I have the list block media list class here, unordered list. And then I have this render post thing, right? So what does render post do? Well, um, if you're familiar with Rails, uh, render post simply just looks for the partial with the name post. So this is what we had before. This is for the full browser version. We now have a new one called underscore post plus phone dot HTML, right? So we have a phone version of the same partial. Let's go and take a look at where I got all that from. So basically, if we take a look at the kitchen sink once more, um, down here, this is the one that I'm using. So if we look at its structure, we can see that it has this li. And then uh, I'm going to explain to you what this swipe out thing is. Uh, we don't actually need it for our example. Um, but the swipe thing, the swipe out thing allows us to do like this. I mean, so we can swipe the content and see like a navigation, like we can click more or delete. In our case, we're just going to tap on it and it's going to go to the show page, right? We don't have to actually do, you know, follow every single thing. 
if we're not going to, you know, to use the, the exact features. So, you know, pick and choose what you want, right? So uh, in this case, I'm just gonna be using the LI with the A tag and then the item inner, so for the content inside over here, and that's all I'm gonna do, uh, which is exactly what I have over here. LI, link to post, you know, item link, item content, and then item inner. How do we now uh, tap on the item and then make it go to the show page of the, of the, you know, the full post page? So here's the thing with Framework 7. It will actually uh, take all the links that you have on a page and turn it into an Ajax request. So what that means is when you click on a link, it's gonna make the request as an Ajax request. So, you know, the, the whole page doesn't reload and uh, you're gonna just get the content back. And how it works is basically it just, you just need to have two main divs. You just need to have the, the div with the class page and div nav bar. Basically, it's gonna look for these classes and it's gonna replace the content of, you know, the respective divs with the ones that come back from the server. So let me explain to you a little bit what that means. So here we have the original nav bar, right? Uh, where we have the list of the posts and here we have the div pages and page and all that kind of stuff. Here's the thing, this page is gonna get replaced when we tap on a particular item, right? So what that means is in the new page, we have to give it that content. So this div class page is what's gonna replace this one here when we tap on the individual item. So in the post show page of the phone version, this is kind of the structure that we're gonna have, right? So if you if you wanna know like where I got this from, uh, if you head over to the kitchen sink, uh, okay, I can go and show it to you. So if you click on read about framework seven, you see you know the, the full post page, if you will. And basically I just got the structure from here. So that should give you an idea of how it works, right? So I don't wanna go into too much detail in this video, We'll talk more a little bit about this, but just know that in every subsequent page that you have that is gonna be replacing the original page, the original layout, you're gonna need at least the nav bar and the page, right? Those are the two divs you're gonna need. You don't always need to replace a nav bar, and if you don't, just don't put it in. But if you wanna replace a nav bar, like in this case, I wanna put a backlink in instead of the original one, which is, you know, the link to the to the left panel, um, you know, I, I just, you know, redo the nav bar and then it just replaces the content. All right, enough rambling. Let's take a look at what we have. So if I hit reload over here, I tap on this, it goes to the full post page like uh, we expect it to. So here you can see the back button. If I hit that, it's gonna come back to the, you know, the post page. I hit another post, I can see another post. So that's pretty much, you know, the basics of page transitions, right? Um, you know, just follow the structure and uh, you, you'll be good to go. You don't need to write any JavaScript or, you know, handle any Ajax. All that is done uh, by Framework 7 for you. So before I end this video, I want to be talking about the left panel here. So I've already filled it out, uh, as I mentioned, but I've done something a little bit special with it. I've added a few icons and uh, I'm using Font Awesome. So if you don't know what that is, uh, head over to fontawesome.github.io and uh, this is it right here. It's just a, basically a font uh, with SVG font, uh, SVG icons, and I can just call and use these icons, um, you know, wherever I want in my application. So that's pretty cool. Uh, they happen to come with a Rails gem, so you can add it as a as a gem in your application, and you can call its helpers to you know make the code to calling each individual icon very concise. Um, I've done something a little bit special with the with these items here, so let's check it out. So I'm gonna head over to the left panel over here. So this is the left panel, um, you know, from before all we had was something like this and then I just, you know, added this stuff in. Uh, again, like, you know, head over to the Framework 7 kitchen sink to check out the basic structure. Uh, I just followed the structure that they've given there. And basically the special thing that I've done is this thing here, this panel link helper. So how does this work? Well, let's check it out. I've got this phones helper here that I created and it's got the method panel link and it's, I'm passing in three keyword arguments over here. It's rendering the partial panel link over here. So this partial here. So this is has the structure again, back to the framework seven kitchen sink. It's got the structure to, you know, re correctly render each individual item in the, in the nav bar that I want in the, in the left panel that I want. Uh, I'm just using the classes provided by the kitchen sink. And uh, you know, basically these are, 
the, the three variables that I'm passing in are the path, the icon name. So basically this icon helper is coming from uh, framework seven, right? Uh, sorry, font awesome right here, right? So the icon uh, helper, just like that. So all I have to do is pass in the name of the icon that I want. So let's go back to the code. The icon name is coming from, you know, this part here, right? So, and then the text as well. So let's, let's go back and forth between these and then just check. Actually, let me just put it in uh, two screens like that. And this should make thing, make things much more clear. So panel link text. So the text comes here, uh, the icon edit. So this is the name of the icon, right? And uh, I'm using bars for the second one. And then the, basically the path it just comes over here. Um, now, if I go back and look at the helper, you'll see that I'm passing in path, icon, and text. And then I'm just calling that partial and passing in the respective arguments. So basically that's pretty much it. Now, one last thing uh, before I go, um, the CSS for the list items uh, need to be modified a little bit. And I've just, you know, I've just written my own custom uh, CSS over here, well, SAS, if you will, uh, to, you know, to change the color of the left panel. Um, so, you know, you, you can uh, just come and copy this one if you want the exact same look that I have, or you can, you know, come up with your own thing. Uh, this is a uh, pretty straightforward stuff. Before I end this episode, what I've done is in GitHub, so if I go over to GitHub, I've created a pull request for the, uh, you know, for the code that I've been working on. And you can come and actually see the file differences, you know, the file changes that I've done, uh, you know, to, to get from, you know, point from the previous episode to this current point where uh, I have everything working. Um, you know, I've got one more thing that I didn't want to talk about over here, which is a new post form. You can come and take a look at the, you know, at the code that I've got over here. It's got everything, you know, the, the you can basically just copy and paste this into your, your code. Over here is an example of how I did the form. Uh, so everything is basically here. You can come and take a look. Uh, I'm going to post a link to these in the description below. I'll also post a link to the kitchen sink, the Framework 7 kitchen sink in the link below. In the next episode, we're going to be refining our solution. Look what I mean by refining our solution. So I have the network tab activated here because I need to show you guys something. So I'm going to hit back. I'm going to head back to the index page of this post. So if I, if I click on one of these posts, let's take a look at what happens. Obviously it's going to make a request to the server and it's going to render the page for us. But if I look at the response, it's actually rendering the entire page, like the entire HTML. And we don't need the entire page. We don't need the entire layout. We just need, as I mentioned before, just this div with the class page and just the nav bar. Right? We just need those two divs, but we're rendering the entire page. Now, this would be fine in a desktop environment where you have, you know, like massive bandwidth and, uh, you know, you, you can be sure that the connection is going to be good. But if you're on a mobile, you want to really optimize that. You want to minimize that. And yeah, you might be thinking we could just add a layout false, uh, you know, in, in the controller. But there are problems that come with that. So in the next episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to optimize um, the solution that we have, and I'm going to show you how to solve the problems that come when we optimize. If you guys haven't subscribed, please subscribe, like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike it, and let me know why you dislike it. Um, share the video with your friends and family, and I really appreciate uh, you guys uh, subscribing. So I'll see you guys in the next episode.